Hey guys, today we're going to be doing a bit of a deep clean of a KitchenAid. It's been roughly five months since I gave mine a deep clean and as it was due another one, I thought I would film it in case it helps anybody out. So this has just been used, as you can see I've got flour and icing sugar on the base and on the top, so first thing we're going to do is just give it a quick wipe over, which is what we would usually do on a daily clean after each use. This is all that's needed usually, but every six months or so, it can be good to get into the places that you don't think dirt will gather. Firstly, I'm going to tilt my head back so it's easier to access the plate. You'll see there are three screws and you just want to undo these and your plate should pop right off. So it all looks pretty clean until you realize there's actually a rim of cocoa powder and cake gunk that's made its way underneath the rim. It's also pretty sticky underneath too. I'm just taking a wipe and how satisfying is it to get rid of that ring of gunk. You can also clean the screws and the plate itself and if you take anything away from this tutorial at all is to always keep your screws with the elements that you have taken off. Do not lose your screws. Now back at the top, most of these silver elements can actually be taken off. You want a very slim, flat head screwdriver. The best ones would probably be the jeweler's screwdrivers, but I only have this one to hand. You just want to gently slot the screwdriver at the top of that silver rim and gently twist to push it down. Don't try to get it off all at once, keep moving your screwdriver around the perimeter, slowly loosening it, and you'll see there is a gap starting to emerge. Push in the screwdriver, give it a gentle twist to push that silver ring down and you'll eventually be able to pull it off. There's not too much dirt in here but there is a bit of flour and it does need a nice deep clean on the other side. The easiest part to remove is probably the attachment cap because this part is actually designed to be removed. You can get all sorts of fancy attachments for your KitchenAid such as scales and sifters and I have my eye on that pasta machine attachment. These will all attach here at the front to turn your KitchenAid into plenty of other kitchen gadgets. This silver band can also be removed. You can see there are two screws holding it either side at the back. You can actually take that off without removing the whole back, but as it's easy to do and the screw is right here at the top, we're just going to loosen it. Again, don't lose your screws, don't get them mixed up. The back will pull away and you want to lift it slightly because there's some tiny hooks holding it on at the bottom. As you can see, mine is full of icing sugar and flour. Now we have better access to those screws. You just want to remove these and gently slide off that silver band. This is super thin and incredibly flexible, so try not to bend it out of shape. You can see I have some flour on this band and also hiding behind it on the machine itself is gunky cocoa powder again. I'm now laying the machine down on a tea towel so it doesn't scratch the surface and we're going to remove these rubber feet. These should just pop straight off. Now look deep up into the neck of the KitchenAid and you can just see a little flat head screw in the centre. This is easy to get out and a little bit harder to get back in, but removing it is going to make the central pin looser to remove. This is the central pin and you can see it runs through the neck all the way to the other side. I'm just placing my folded up cleaning wipe over it so that the end of my screwdriver doesn't damage it and I'm placing the screwdriver right over that pin and then giving it a good couple of wax with my hammer. This as you can see has started to push the pin out the other side and you really need to hold the top motor of your KitchenAid as you pull the rest of that pin out with your hands or pliers. This machine is top heavy and as you remove the pin, there is nothing to hold the mortar in place, so you must hold it securely. Now you can lift this up freely and lay it down on your cloth. In here, you can see there's big chunks of buttercream and lots more flour and icing sugar. 
I like to lay my KitchenAid this way up as to not damage the levers on each side. Now get to work scrubbing and cleaning your mixer. I've just got some water and Dettol in a jug and a cleaning toothbrush and I'm going around getting all those hard to reach areas, removing any hardened icing sugar. This top circle can be removed but it's such a pain in the butt and it's easier just to scrub it upside down like this. When you've finished with your cleaning solution, you can throw your rubber feet in. After all your elements have been cleaned and dried off, you can start reassembling. First, we're just sticking the rubber feet back on so it doesn't mark the work surface. And reinserting that plate and screws. Now putting the head back on, it's important to match up that main lever down the center and that little catch to the left of it. This next part can be a little tricky, but you need to get down eye level with that hole and hold the motor head until you see a nice clear gap all the way through to the other side. It has to be lined up perfectly for your pin to go back in. Just keep tapping it back in until it sticks out equally on the other side. Once that's in, you'll want to secure the pin in place by grabbing that little flathead screw. Not going to lie, this is super fiddly and it'd be made easier if you did have a magnetic screwdriver. I'm just holding it with my finger and trying to push it up inside the hole before screwing it nice and tight. Now you don't want to be messing around with the wiring, I'm just taking a nice fluffy brush and dusting off some of the icing sugar very gently. If you've been working on it and your main power lead slips out, there is a little U shape that it just slots back into. Carefully place your silver band back on without bending it out of shape and secure it with those two screws. As long as you kept them safe, you should be able to find them. To place the back back on, you want to hook your tiny hooks on the base of your KitchenAid to either side and then push it closed at the top, fastening it with another screw. Lastly, we're going to put our attachment cap back on and our silver ring. This just gets pushed up with a little bit of force with your palm until it fits snug all the way around. The reason why we only clean this every six months is because the more you take this ring off, the looser it's going to get each time and you don't want this just to fall off in the middle of your mixing. But now you can stand back and admire your deep cleaned KitchenAid, knowing none of that nasty cocoa gunk is sitting under your plate or behind that band. Hope you find this tutorial useful and that you found it super satisfying to clean. Let me know how much dirt you found in your KitchenAid in the comments below. Thanks guys, see you next week.